What's up, Internet? Welcome back to another exciting episode of Nigel's Critiques and Stuff. I'm your host, Nigel. Gonna be giving you my thoughts on movies I've been watching this week. And today we're gonna dive into a biopic about the biggest music sensation to capitalize off of gospel and rhythm and blues music since Elvis himself. It's the movie about Elvis himself. Now, if you're into extremely opinionated, no smoke up your ass movie reviews, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down there for me. Okay, let's dive in. Now, going into this movie, I didn't want to be too prejudgy before checking it out. I mean, from the previews, I'm like, all right, it's Vegas, it's flashy, it's Elvis. So it, it could potentially be a great flick or it could be another waste of 18 bucks. But then I was like, okay, it's a Baz Luhrmann flick. And for those of you not familiar with who Baz Luhrmann is, he's a fellow Aussie like myself, if you can't tell from my Australian accent. <laughs> but he's a great filmmaker who does these lavish, over-the-top productions like The Great Gatsby and Milan Rouge. So I'm like, he's the perfect guy to visually tell a story if Las Vegas is probably going to be the main backdrop. And then Tom Hanks is attached to the movie as well. And I'm a huge Tom fan. I mean, he's generally got a good track record for making above average flicks. Except for that one time he teamed up with the Coen brothers and made what was the worst movie of his career. But other than that, I mean, he, he normally picks a winner. And I, I gotta say, from, from the very start of the movie, these two elements alone, Tom Hanks' performance and Baz Luhrmann's unique storytelling style, they immediately pull you into this world and set you up for a story you really want to sit back and watch. Now, you've got the main character of Elvis being played by Austin Butler, who I, I cannot stress enough, really pulls off playing a believable Elvis. So, so much so that by the end of the movie, you're sitting there like, oh shit, I forgot this was just a kid playing Elvis. You get caught up thinking he, he was the real deal. Like he doesn't come off feeling like some cheesy Elvis impersonator, you know, doing some cartoony Elvis voice or whatnot. From the first time you hear him speak, you're like, oh shit, Elvis is in the building. Now, the movie is really the story of Elvis and his sordid relationship with his manager, Colonel Tom Parker, who's played by Tom Hanks. And for the most part, it's, it's narrated and told from the perspective of Colonel Parker. Now, Colonel Parker was a talent manager slash sideshow carnival promoter who's portrayed in the movie as being a little bit sleazy and manipulative and self-serving and immoral and okay, maybe he was kinda all of those things. But the man was a marketing genius. I mean, he understood the business of show business and he really knew how to sell a show. And if we're being honest, Elvis was the ultimate carnival show attraction of the time. I mean, it's, it's 1950s America, which was already one of the most backwards ass times to be alive. And it's not like white people had never heard gospel music or rhythm and blues before, but they, they just never seen a white guy doing it. And the Colonel had spent his entire career exploiting things that people had never seen before. And he knew right away that Elvis was his golden ticket. I mean, he just had all the right ingredients to shake up everything people considered to be normal back in that era. Oh, 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 I mean, let's see. Close-minded, Bible Belt way of thinking. Check. Completely racist segregation laws. Check. Old white guys who didn't want gyrating pelvises, penetrating and stimulating their virgin daughter's thoughts and eyeballs. Check. I mean, literally everything that made Elvis controversial in the first place is exactly what catapulted him to superstar status. And I really do love the fact that the movie unapologetically dives into Elvis's colorful upbringing. 
you get a chance to see how his father being in prison really affected him as a child and made him want to be this superhero savior of the family. Plus, they don't shy away from the huge influence that the African American culture had on Elvis and how gospel music and R&B were the cornerstones of what white America would go on to eventually call rock and roll. But the movie really strives to showcase more of Elvis's human side and, and gives a more insightful perspective of his character because throughout the movie, you never really feel like he ever saw himself as this superhuman, larger than life character that other people made him out to be. It's like through everything, he just wanted his fans to know he was a real person and, and their pains were his pains. Overall, it was a really entertaining bio flick with a lot of heartfelt notes from America's past that still resonate in today's crazy, crazy world. But Austin Butler is truly just amazing to watch on screen, so it's not like you really have to be the biggest Elvis fan to enjoy the movie. But that also doesn't mean you have to be like the guy sitting behind me, who apparently thought it was his job to sing along every time Elvis got on stage. I mean, my only real gripe with the movie is that it's probably about 30 minutes too long. They, they really could have wrapped it up a little bit sooner, but whatever. So I'm giving this one a thumbs up and a shimmy shimmy because it, it's got a really good storyline, some great visual appeal, and a soundtrack that really makes you want to move. They do remix a bunch of Elvis's old songs with new beats throughout the movie, and it's a pretty fun time overall. Well, that about wraps it up for me in this episode of Nigel's Critiques. And if you want to see more of my wildly opinionated content, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button down there for me. And also for plenty more interesting articles, make sure to head over to UrbaneBachelor.com. Plenty of insightful, interesting articles over there at that website. Alright, that about does it for me. See you next movie.